Once Haya figures go up for pre-order, they do tend to close quick. So get yours in today at Big Bad Toy Store at the link in the description. It's better to be safe than sorry. I do myself. Dragon Ball Horror Kaiju and more. Steven Story Reviews. Hey, hello there collectors. It's going to be Steven here. And today we're going to be taking a look at another... Mothra figure from Godzilla King of the Monsters. Remember a little while ago when I said we were done with King of the Monsters figures? No? It's funny because I vaguely do. But nevertheless, we are here with another Haya Toys exquisite basic review of Mothra Emerald Titan version. This was provided by BBTS Big Bad Toy Store as a review opportunity so this way you can take a look to see whether or not it'll be worth adding into your collection because I was sort of on the fence but we were able to make this review happen through a nice collaboration and I do have to say after having this in hand there are going to be some small changes here or there which will make the core figure of Mothra great but is this going to make a good replacement for the original or is this just going to be I guess one may say a supplement in the collection as well. Well, let's take a look to see whether or not the Emerald Titan version or Baja Blast version is going to be worth adding into your collection. So I think this is pretty short, sweet, and to the point in terms of looks because Mothra is sort of, I don't know, Emerald I think is not quite the right descriptive term, but I get what they were going for. You know, it's better for marketing. You, you say it's, it's like the Emerald Titan. That sounds great when it comes off the tongue, right? It's good for marketing, but I think Mothra is more so towards the blue side of things here, but you know, nevertheless, not splitting hairs. Mothra looks beautiful when we consider the full back long range shot, but then we sort of begin to look at the figure a little closer, and that's where the details kind of get a bit muddied up. And especially, of course, we're going to do a side-by-side -side comparison when we get closer to the end. Mothra's details basically are non-existent here. There are some details like the antennae, antennas, whichever is the correct plural these days. They are kind of lost with no real defined paint applications to help enhance them amongst the sort of dark tones that are used throughout the figure, which is a bit disappointing to see there. And then as we continue on throughout the main body, it's sort of the main theme. That was just the example. Yes, all of the sculpted details are present, but unless there is something that is specifically with a unique dry brushing to help bring out the ridges or a, a, a wash to help bring out some of the low areas, we can't really comprehend what's going on with Mothra here. It, it, it's almost um, not, not ethereal, um, I think you get what I'm trying to say. It's almost like you have to imagine what details are going on here, which I guess can be appreciative because it's the sort of idea of this poster version of Mothra, right? This is kind of the same thing that NECA did, but at the same time, you really want to appreciate the finer details that are found in your action figure. The wings obviously look fantastic, and that's going to be the most beautiful part of it, right? When you're looking at this figure, that's where your eyes are going to go, so maybe the finer details on the body don't really mean anything, but I guess I'm going to leave that up to you. And of course, macro photography does help when you are making that point and you're thinking, huh, maybe that will sway me one way or another. But that is going to be back to the individual collector. <clears throat> well, <laughs> here's the accessories. It's a, kind of the same support stand as we got the first time with Mothra. And I always say kind of because what they did this time was they included screws in all of the hinges. So if you want to tighten them up, you can. However, with my Flameborn Rodan, I did have an issue where regardless of how I really tried to tighten them up, it didn't really matter. And then one, uh, I stripped it and it broke the screw. So, eh, it's okay. Uh, and I also cracked it. So, eh, you know, they're modular. So you can, like for an example, take apart like so. And you can pop them. You can do that if you want. So you, so you can make the stands bigger or you can make them smaller. The claw here from Mothra, I, I vaguely remember the original release. Um, it seems like it's working a bit better for me this time. So I don't know if that's a placebo effect or what, but I think, I think this kind of works. I don't know. It's kind of small, but I will say that this connection is very, very tight. And maybe that's why it's not loose at all. Um, I am worried though with pushing it um, if that may crack the plastic, because that is something that with Tamashi stage arms that happens frequently because of the translucent plastic. 
So that is something to definitely keep in mind. You don't want to force it. But then again, I don't think I have any of the same Tamashi arms that I've had uh, for like more than two years. So that's just something. Mothra's articulation. What has she got? What has she not? Basically all the same. So wings, they are on hinges. As you can see, they go up, they go down. Those are the four wings. Okay. The hind wings. Can you guess? They go down and they go up. Ooh, we can also get little swivels and, and little ball joints out of them. So we can kind of get them to do that. I think that's pretty cool. Now, I do want to uh, do want to make you aware of something. I have seen some other folks to go nuts and like bend and like curl the don't don't do that. These are th these are not hard plastic like like this hard, right? But if you do that, you're gonna snap the wings, okay? I don't know how some of the people I've seen do that do that. Uh, they must have heated the wings up in order to get them to like twist and curl like that. So uh, don't do that, please. Don't do that. Um, not a case of monkey see, monkey do. Please don't. Anyway, for the uh, arms here. So, it, you know, they, they kind of just move on swivels, right? I think I popped them off before and they were on ball joints for the OG. Um, but they basically just swivel. This one here. Does this want to move? No, but this one does. This one's on ball joint. This one, let's go ahead and zoom in so you can maybe see what I'm really, really talking about here. All right? Okay. Boop. See, it's kind of stuck. I think it's just paint. So I think if I heat it up, it'll be fine. You can kind of see where it's stuck right there. So I imagine if I heat it up, it will be fine. I'm just showing you that if that can happen, uh, it might. So just be cautious. Okay. So backing it out, let's say to here, we do have the hind legs here, which do rock around a bit. So there you go. I think these are going to be on ball joints, but they basically just act as swivels. And then we do have this midsection, which it is on a ball joint from what I've seen before. It really is just kind of swiveling around. Like it doesn't want to pivot like my original Mothra does. So I don't know if it's a matter of them changing what this joint is. I have not been able to pop this off to see, but I really did prefer having like the ability to get this to pivot or whatnot. But yeah, I mean, it's Mothra. She's more of a display piece here than she is like a, a super duper action figure. So that is something to just keep in mind. So articulation, uh, she's fine. You know, throw her up on the, on the display stand, put her on your shelf, and she's something pretty to look at. All right. Size comparison time so you can see how big Mothra is going to be. And again, she's going to be the exact same asterisk as the original figure, just in different colors. So if you already have this figure, you can pretty much put it, uh, put, put the original figure somewhere else on your shelf and you can figure out how much space you're going to need. Here's going to be a side-by-side -side comparison where again, it's pretty much identical one-to-one. -one. The markings for the wings are going to be different because when they do this sort of green, blue, emerald poster color version for Mothra, she does end up looking different for the wing pattern. And then when we get into the body, here is where there's going to be a big change change. And I even commented on this in the articulation section. I thought that they maybe changed the joint for the midsection. No, what they actually did was they extended the, uh, the, the midsection of that barbell joint. So this way it's longer and it doesn't have as much uh, tilt and rotation as the original release. So for here, uh, after I popped it out, I just, um, you know, didn't push it in all the way. And that's how I prefer the articulation to be. So that's just a little thing that I did. So there you go. All right, that's about it. So buy now, skip, or wait for a deal. Mothra is very neat. I really do like this release. I think she is cool. However, here is the conundrum that I had with picking this up. I really didn't feel that I needed myself to pick this up, which again, I am covering with a big shout out to BBTS for this one. I think what would have really sealed the deal here for this one 
is if they included something else like the cocoon that NECA did or a Mothra larva at this scale. Because if you take a look at, let's say, one of the alternate Godzillas that they did, like one of the heat rays, they included the beam, or they included for an alternate heat ray an entirely different color scheme or a gimmick. Burning Godzilla has a completely unique paint scheme to him that is iconic and in his own character. For King Ghidorah, they did the gravity beam version. Flameborn Rodan, they have the UV trick. For this one, it's just really a different color and nothing else. So that lack of an extra accessory is why I'm seeing a lot of folks saying, Steven, should I get the Emerald Titan Mothra? So with that being said, this figure is good. There are some very small changes here or there. It's mostly just going to be the, the midsection joint. But um, otherwise, if you like what you see, pick it up. If you don't, I really don't know what's going to sway you. But the figure is good. So this is a positive review. <laughs>